Hey guys, we're outside again in the driveway working on the Spec V. Today we're going to be installing the Vision 1 mid plate. I have their prototype one that was a VQ that I walled out the holes. We got the production unit, so we're going to go ahead and show you how easy that is to install. I've recorded some of the weight savings and posted that to like the forums and stuff. But yeah, let's go ahead and see how easy it is to put this new unit in, bolt it up, and put my exhaust back on. Because uh, with the, the Gen 2, the exhaust kind of gets in the way of the mid plate, so the mid pipe gets in the way. So, got lots of things going on. We're going to be trimming a block to make sure that the V-band on the exhaust clears. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get right to that. So, here we are. You can see right down in here-ish. That's kind of hard to tell from up here. But, let's see. Ah, that's better. You can see right there. That's where my uh, V-band's been hitting. So we're just going to take our tool and we're just going to clearance it. We're going to massage it a little. Make it so that there's a little more space. And then you can see the wallowed out holes from the VQ mid plate. It works. But the fourth hole right back up there doesn't actually fit because the Gen 2 hole doesn't match the B15 trans. So you could wallow out that hole on the on the oil pan and have access to it if you wanted to put all six bolts in. But the new production unit has two of them that go back into the transmission right there. And so that's what we're gonna be we're gonna be doing. So we got the old one removed, all the old hardware. Down here, you can see the front mount here. So pretty much I had to remove this because I'm changing to the production model. But realistically all you would do is remove your cross member if you're going to install for the first time. So, front mount, we got the rear mount, which is gross, because I have a power steering leak, which hopefully will be fixed sh shortly, and yeah, but other than it being gross, that's where it goes. You just use the same two mounts that you use for mounting your cross member, you remove all that. Remove all the bolts from here, from that rear mount that kind of cages the rear or the passenger side axle. So once you get all the motor mounts and everything cross member out of the way, you'll be good to mount the mounts. And then we can mount the mid plate. And I think I'm going to use a little bit of medium strength thread locker on this this time just to help with vibration because I did notice that some of them started to kind of walk out, but they can't really walk out too far because my mid pipe gets in the way. So we ended up, as you saw in the time lapse, we grinded that clean to hopefully clearance it. We'll check it when we start mounting the exhaust again, but first I want to get the mid plate on. So let's go ahead, get all the fresh bolts out, get everything set up. Um, I'm going to use five out of the six because this last hole, like I said, uh, let's see if I can get in there. That hole doesn't actually line up with the trans. You'd have to uh, bore it out upwards and with the engine already in, it's kind of a pain in the ass. So I would do that beforehand when you're going to first do your Gen 2 install would be to, you know, clearance that hole so that it lines up and then you'll be able to use all six and that would be nice and strong. These are the two on the trans that it's going to meet up with and yeah should be really really good so let's go ahead and we'll try and get you set up somewhere that you can maybe actually see something and get to it so we got the production unit 
production hardware. Got some medium strength thread locker. I'm gonna use this going into the block and into the trans just to give that a little more rigidity or just vibration resistance. And then the ones that hold the mid plate to the mounts, they are nylocks, so they are usually pretty good. Now we got the new spacers that he changed up just for this. Old spacers were a bit small. These are a little bit bigger in diameter to help distribute the, the pressure up against the block and really give you a nice snug fit. So let's go ahead, get this opened up, and get started with mounting it. five bolts instead of three and like I said if you have a gen 2 and you get that well it would be the fourth hole but now it's the uh, fourth hole on the block there's six holes total but this one on my card doesn't align so if you're watching this before you do your gen 2 swap make sure you follow out that hole and then you'll be able to have all six and then your, your engine will be super duper secure other than that um, the NVH from the mid plate, even though it's all metal, these spacers kind of help isolate it. And the fact that it's, I don't know, for whatever reason, and maybe it's because it's thin, uh, it just doesn't seem to transfer it very well. It, it's no more worse than when I had full solid engine mounts. Another thing that I did, instead of the upper springs, or upper like little plastic rings, I ended up making a full size plate to kind of mimic this. This was when I was designing my own mid plate, but then Peter decided to beat me to the punch, and so I just got his, because, well, if someone else can do it, why not just buy it? And yeah, we were on the same path anyway. But his looks very pretty, did a very good job producing it, and so this was sort of the original shape that I was gonna go for for the mount plate, it was kind of just following this here. Um, so, I ended up just making a little plastic shim to isolate that a little bit better and give more contact throughout the entire thing from when this gets transferred. So that way, if, if the engine's pushing and trying to rotate, it's not sitting on top of just little circle bushings on both sides that it can, you know, kind of break through. I wanted it to be more solid. So now let's go ahead, put the header back in. And yeah, we're gonna put the header back in and see where, if I have to clearance any more of it. Hopefully it all just works because yeah, I really don't want to have to shave more, but that's it. Let's go ahead and put the harmonic back on the car. I also have an OEM gasket that I'm gonna use instead of the crappy one that was on there before. We have an OEM spec one right here, hopefully to help <coughs> seal a little bit better. It does look like I have a little bit of leakage. Um, yeah, but I want to seal it up way, way good and hopefully not have any more issues with the V-band hitting. Where did I put the V-band? down here. You can see where it was starting to rub. So we have clearanced it. We on our new gasket through the header. And while I was opening the package, I cut my finger. It's actually pretty sharp. 
careful there. So now we're going to go ahead, take our harmonic, take our header, and we're going to try and put it back in. I ended up clearancing these holes just a smidge, so now it fits even better. And yeah, let's go ahead and get that bolted up. So, found all of our, our nuts and washers. These are just some titanium ones I got from Speed Factory. Because I don't like the burnt look. I wanted to go with just the raw titanium. And that was the only place that had it. So, looks just like everybody else's. Feels just like everybody else's because they probably all get them from the same place. test will be if I can get the V-band on with the header fully tightened. If not, we're going to have to undo basically everything we just did, which I didn't think about. just kind of got my own head and I figured, hey, I want to go. Please slip over. Oh, so it doesn't fit, but it does. It's close enough. I was able to just barely flex it so that I could get the V-band over that spot. But once it's tight, I don't think we should have any rubbing issues anymore, which would be amazing. So yeah, let's just hurry up and get this done with. Now we've got it all finished. We've got it all back together. Got the bumper back on. Mid plate went in pretty easy. I like the way it looks with the black anodized. Fits really good. So if you guys have any questions about it or if this helped you install yours, leave a comment down below. And yeah, we'll catch you on the next one, which will hopefully be getting to the power steering rack and the axle seals just to seal the car up. Because later this month, I'm planning on trying to take it out, see what it will do on the track. And yeah, have a little bit of fun with it. So we'll see you later. Thanks for watching.